Hello, I am Pastor Jennifer. I am sharing the first month's event in the Bible, wishing you a very blessed year. If you have missed the first video on this topic, please click the link right below. Thanks for watching in advance. The second first month event that I'd like to share today is the establishment of the Passover, which is found in the Exodus story as a Jewish feast. Passover is Pesach in Hebrew and Pascha in Greek, and this feast name appears 79 times in the Bible in total, 50 times in the Old Testament and 29 times in the New Testament, most frequently in the Pentateuch and in the Four Gospels age. And if we follow the Jewish three divisions of the Old Testament, it appears 22 times in the first division, which is called Torah, or the Law, or the Pentateuch, six times in the second division, which is called Levim, or Prophets, and again 22 times in the third division, called Ketuvim, or Writings, in both ESP and NSP English translations of the Bible. It forms an interesting symmetry with the prophets in the middle. And we learned from this that since this feast was established as a law, it has been part of life and history of Israel. When it appears first in the Torah, it is mentioned as a feast to the Lord. Let me read Exodus 12:14. Now this day will be a memorial to you, and you shall celebrate it as a feast to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you are to celebrate it as a permanent ordinance. God also set the date for this feast himself. Leviticus 23, 4-5 says, These are the appointed times of the Lord. Holy convocations which you shall proclaim at the times appointed for them. In the first month, on the fourteenth day of the month at twilight, is the Lord's Passover. Yes, Passover, which was mentioned by God before all other feasts, was supposed to be observed in the first month, on the fourteenth day. But there was something special about this first month. Exodus 12 to says, This month shall be the beginning of the months for you. It is to be the first month of the year to you, the very month that God mentions as this month year, was designated as the first month of the Jewish calendar. What month exactly does this month refer to? What makes this month so special and important? This month was the month when God saved Israel out of Egypt, the land of slavery. And the fourteenth day of this month was the culmination of God's grace of salvation. Here, the phrase, the culmination of God's grace of salvation, implies that the grace had been with Israel even before the day, right? Indeed, God judged the land of Egypt by sending nine plagues upon it till this time. Because Pharaoh, king of Egypt, did not obey when he was commanded by God to send his people away. However, in the midst of all plagues, God protected his people completely. The Bible testifies to it. At the time of the fifth plague, which was death of livestock, only Egyptian livestock died. At the time of the seventh plague, which was hail, there was no hail in the land of Goshen, where the sons of Israel were. And again, at the time of the ninth plague, which was darkness, all the sons of Israel had light in their dwellings. These are just three examples. And the truth is that God set Israel apart from Egyptians and protected them all throughout the nine plagues. Another reason for using the phrase, the culmination of God's grace of salvation, is that during the tenth plague, 
God saved life of his people. That is, in the tenth plague, where God struck down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beast, he kept sons of Israel alive. God gave instructions to Israel, but that they would leave. It is not easy to understand why God set the feast of the Passover and had Israel celebrate it in such a life or death situation. But it is like God gave His people an opportunity to obey Him thoroughly and leave. The instructions were like this. First, God made Israel to make the month the beginning of months and the first month of the year to them and observe the very first Passover in the same month. Secondly, He also gave them detailed instructions on what to eat for the season. God had Israel to take a lamb, an unblemished male a year old, for each household on the tenth of the month and kill it on the fourteenth. There are some more details in the Bible, but thirdly and most importantly, God commanded them to take some of the blood and put it on the two doorposts and on the lintel of the houses in which they would eat it. Then God was going to go through the land of Egypt on that night and strike down all the firstborn in the land of Egypt, both men and beasts, but Passover Israel, seeing the blood from this divine act of passing over. The name of the feast was derived. What we must remember is that God did not do so because Israel was worthy of such wonderful grace of salvation. As we saw in the first video of this series, there was original sin caused by Adam and Eve in them as well. They were not holy either. They at first did not trust and exhibited their discontentment towards Moses and Aaron sent by God. Nevertheless, God had them prepare something else to die in their place for their sins. And the thing was the Passover lamb. Yes, God passed over his people's houses, seeing the blood of the Passover lamb instead of theirs. So we can say, that God redeemed the firstborn of Israel through the death of the Passover lamb. The Hebrew word pada here translated means to redeem or liberate someone enslaved or captivated by paying a ransom for him. Just one thing is, this redemption would not be achieved without blood. Hebrews 9.22 says, And according to the law, one may almost say all things are cleansed with blood, and without shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness. Anyways, after this redemption was completed, Israel had their last meal in Egypt according to God's instructions. As they were told by God, they had to meal hastily, with their loins girded, their sandals on their feet and their staff in the hand. In the end, after experiencing the saving grace of God in the first month, on the 14th of the month, about 600,000 men, aside from children, took their first steps for exodus out of Egypt. God accompanied them, not taking away the pillar of cloud by day, nor the pillar of fire by night from before the people. He also made the cloud and the darkness be with the camp of Egypt, chasing after Israel, while letting light with the camp of Israel at night, so that the camp of Egypt could not come near. Eventually, as is well known, the chariots and the horsemen, even Pharaoh's entire army that were following them, were buried in the Red Sea, whereas the exodus of the sons of Israel was perfectly completed. To sum up, the Passover signifies number one, God's grace of salvation, number two, and salvation 
royal ransom, which is the culmination of the grace. Based on this fact, we can connect the Passover event to the redemptive work done by Jesus Christ on the cross and salvation that was made available to us through the shedding of his precious blood. The strongest evidence for this comes from the Bible. Isaiah 53, 5-7 But he was pierced through our transgressions. He was crushed for our iniquities. The chastening for our well-being fell upon him, and by scourging we are healed. All of us, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to his own way. But the Lord has caused the iniquity of us all to fall on him. He was oppressed, and he was afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. Like a lamb that is led to slaughter, and like a sheep that is silent before its shearers, so he did not open his mouth. John 1 29. The next day, John the Baptist saw Jesus coming to him and said, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. John 11 49 to 52. But one of them, Caiaphas, who was a high priest that year, said to them, You know nothing at all, nor do you take into account that it is expedient for you that one man die for the people, and that the whole nation might perish. Now he did not say this on his own initiative, but being high priest that year, he prophesied that Jesus was going to die for the nation and not for the nation only, but in order that he might also gather together into one, the children of God who are scattered abroad. 1 Peter 3.18 For Christ also died for sins once for all, the just for the unjust, so that he might bring us to God, having been put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the Spirit. Hebrews 7.26-28 For it was fitting for us to have such a high priest, holy, innocent, undefiled, separated from sinners, and exalted above the heavens, who does not need daily, like those high priests, to offer up sacrifices, first for his own sins, and then for the sins of the people, because this he did once for all, when he offered up himself, when he offered up himself. For the law appoints men as high priests who are weak, but the word of the oath which came after the law appoints a son made perfect forever. 1 Peter 1, 18-19 Knowing that you are not redeemed with perishable things like silver or gold from your futile way of life inherited from your forefathers, but with precious blood as of a lamb unblemished and spotless, the blood of Christ. Let me share, lastly, some scriptures on holiness. Exodus 15, 13 In your loving kindness you have led the people whom you have redeemed. In your strength you have guided them to your holy habitation. 1 Corinthians 5, 7 Clean out the old leaven so that you may be a new lamp, just as you are in fact unleavened. For Christ, our Passover, also has been sacrificed. Hebrews 10, 10 By this will we have been sanctified through the offering of the body of Jesus Christ once for all. 1 Peter 1, 14-16 As obedient children, do not be conformed to the former lusts which were yours in your ignorance. Like the Holy One who called you, be holy yourselves also in all your behavior, because it is written, You shall be holy, for I am holy. 
Romans 6, 10 to 11. For the death that he died, he died to sin once for all, but the life that he lives, he lives to God. Even so, consider yourselves to be dead to sin, but alive to God in Christ Jesus. 1 John 3, 21 to 22. Beloved, if our heart does not condemn us, we have confidence before God, and whatever we ask, we receive from Him, because we keep His commandments and do the things that are pleasing in His sight. Beloved, may the Lord's redeeming grace and protecting power be over you all throughout the year, as you seek to live a holy life for the glory of God. Amen. This is all for today. Please stay safe and see you next time.